we're going to take a look at data carving. Now, data carving is something that's really important to do as part of a forensic investigation. There are a number of reasons for that. One of the reasons, of course, is because you can't always guarantee when files have been deleted or moved around on the file system. So it's really useful to go digging around amongst the bits and bytes on the drive and be able to locate the remnants of files that haven't been completely written over. So the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to jump over to my S drive and then CD CFDI 320. So I'm in the CFDI 320 directory there. Now data carving is definitely something you can do manually. You can certainly go use tools like grep or some other tools that will allow you to search through a disk image and be able to locate the bytes and strings that are signatures for particular file types. This can be incredibly tedious. This is definitely one place where I do recommend some automated help. Now, I'm not always enormously fond of automated tools, particularly if you're not really sure what's going on under the hood, if you're not really familiar with all of the concepts so that you can somehow verify what's going on. I'm not always enormously fond of automated tools, but this is one that can be so tedious to do manually that it is definitely useful to have a tool that will do it automatically for you. And Scalpel happens to be one of those. This is an open source tool. And you can just run Scalpel and you can see how simple it is to run it. The thing about Scalpel is it comes with a configuration file. And let's just take a quick look at that. I'm going to go over to my S drive here and then CFDI 320 again. And here's the configuration file. So I'm going to open this up using WordPad or let's just use Notepad. It's a little bit easier. Actually, let's use WordPad and see if it will fix those line breaks for us. So here we've got this in WordPad and the line breaks have been fixed. And you can see there's this is a pretty detailed configuration file, but what it really comes down to is determining which file types that you actually want to go looking for. So you can comment some out, you can include some of them. Most of the good ones are actually included here. I'm just going to leave this as it is. You can certainly go edit the configuration file if you want to either leave some of the file types out or not leave them out. Some of them are really good at creating false positives and I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to leave the configuration file as it is mostly for demonstration purposes. So we're just going to run ext against my, or scalpel against my ext sample disk image. And this is going to go extract all of the files that it finds. So let me just open this back up again. And what we should have gotten was a directory called scalpel output. And sure enough, we did. And what we've got is a set of JPEGs here, in this case, that it has carved out. And it looks like it didn't quite put it together quite right because what it's assuming for the most part is that all of the blocks are contiguous. So the images that you get back aren't always going to be perfect, but you can get a pretty good sample of images that 
have existed on the disc at one point or another. So looks like we've got a, a pretty good sample of images on this particular drive. And you did see some other file types. Looks like it found some tar gzip files and then a zip file as well. Of course, there's an audit log for the, speci the specifics around what it located in the configuration file that was used in that particular run of Scalpel. So Scalpel, again, you would use it for data carving. It's actually a really good program to use. As you can see, it actually does a pretty good job of pulling all of the files that you actually need out of a particular image without a lot of muss and fuss and configuration settings. It just goes through and locates them from the raw bits and bytes on the disk.